Welcome to Tomorrow's Show Today. I'm Jonathan Rush. There's Kelly Nash. And uh, before we get too far into the podcast, Jonathan, yeah. I want to make sure we're recording the podcast today. Yes, the yeah. audio portion. It was it was posted yesterday. It was po- okay because yeah. I know we had some technical difficulties yesterday with the audio portion. Rob Sanders was able to convert the YouTube video audio and post it. It's my understanding. Beautiful. Okay. So yes, now, if you, go, if you go to 975wcos.com, you can uh, get the audio portion for your podcast. That way, you don't have to look at our faces. We do have faces for radio. We do. I was reminded of that yesterday. Who did I meet yesterday? He told me that joke again to my oh face. Oh my gosh. You got a face for radio. Oh I, really? God. Thanks. I've, I've only been in radio for 40 years. I'm not tired of hearing it yet. <laughs> oh, what are we talking about talking about tomorrow? Well, we it sounds sure redundant, but it's not. We, well, obviously, the first thing we, we schedule tomorrow's show, first thing we got to put on is 6 30. 6 30 tomorrow, same thing we do every Friday, rant and rave. Rant Friday. and rave. So you people, you know, you can call in and you can. Get excited about the weekend. Yep. Maybe you got birthday shout outs or you're angry about something. Or Maybe if you want to put in your vote for the next president of the University of South Carolina. The students, the, the, you, you know, the students are in town. You can start your protests you can. tomorrow. That's a great place exactly. to get it going. You can also maybe call in if you're happy or mm-hmm. upset about the Richland County banning of plastic bags. I got to tell you, I was walking out of a grocery store yesterday with my plastic bags in hand thinking, what turtle can I go choke these with? And um, <laughs> so then I thought, I wonder how many turtles in Richland County actually are affected by the use, me using a plastic bag. If, if there are birds that are getting caught up in these things, I would like to know about that. Um, I don't ever see plastic bags creating a problem, but I'm not in a position to see that. We have one here um, at the radio station. I will admit it was unsightly. The wind kicked it up and it got caught in the tree. And when the wind would blow, all you could see in the wintertime was this bag flopping in the wind. Now, I agree that's unsightly, but is that as bad as it gets in Richland County? I guess so. All the problems have been solved in Richland County. Now we got the plastic bags. The, uh, the Here's some great news for Columbia that I have not seen on Watch Fox or LTX, Reddit, the state, I haven't seen it anywhere. I found it on a Major League Baseball blog this morning. Yes, I read weird things in the morning as well. They're the top 25 minor league baseball teams in America. Now, there's 160 minor league teams, and a lot of them are in AAA affiliates, which means they're big cities, right? Charleston is a single A, and they've, their newspaper down there, the, uh, the Post and Courier reported on it, that their River Dogs made one of the, the list of 25 best-selling merchandise teams in America, which is great. So I went and I looked at the list. Can you believe... That the uh, that our team, the Columbia Fireflies, not only is on the list, but it's one of six teams in the history of baseball to have been on the list every year of its, of its existence. Columbia is selling an incredible amount of merchandise, and nobody's talking about it. Mason's very popular, and they got some pretty good logos. And the fact that it will glow in the dark, yeah. it's a very cool logo. And I'm not surprised they sell a lot. I'm surprised they've been number one. Yeah, we should be celebrating that. Here's I've got, I got some Firefly stuff. I like it. I don't know if we put it on the show, but it's just worth a mention. How about this guy in, from San Francisco who goes to watch his kid play soccer in Spain, and while he's there, he decides, I'll get in on the running of the Bulls, and then decide to take a selfie. During the running? Well, in his defense, he said he had made it to the end of the course, uh-huh. climbed over the fence, watched all the Bulls run. They okay. ran by. Then he climbed back onto the track or whatever, went to take like a five second video to say, hey, look, I made it. I did it. And there was a straggler. He never saw the straggler. (laughs) It almost killed him. It's like that commercial you see with the running of the bulls on television where the guy runs into the shutter and the the, the, the line is, yeah, what you don't see can can hurt you. Yeah, exactly. This will be the next commercial for Geico. (laughs) This guy's going to be the new Geico spokesperson. And it, it came through the back of his neck and shattered his chin. No, so his like cheekbone. His cheekbone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He and never, he lived. He lived, yeah. How do you get that horn out of your neck? Like, when they take it to the end? It shot him in the air. He was never stuck on it. It oh. went through him, shot him gotcha. about 10 feet in the air. He was knocked out. He was being woken up by somebody, and he was touching his cheek. <laughs> and he said, I touched my cheek, and it was came blood was all over. And he goes, that's when I knew I was in trouble. Uh, yeah, you're in big trouble. You just got gored by a bull in your face. 
Um, Can you imagine if you get if it doesn't come out like that, you got to go into the emergency room with the bull behind you. You got to ride the bull oh, into yeah, the emergency. He's very calm about that. <laughs> uh, you know, another thing that we should be talking about, I believe, is that the travel and leisure has come up with their best cities in the world and their best cities in America for visiting. Okay. And uh, believe it or not, three of the top ten are day trips. Th three of the top ten in the in the country are day trips for us here in Columbia. All right, well, that, obviously, Charleston's got to be on the list. Well, I was going to save that for sure. last. Charleston is the best city in America to visit and is the only city, only city in the United States that made the top ten list for the whole world. For the world. For the world. Charleston's in the top ten of cities to visit in the world. Yeah, and it's just a day trip. Savannah yeah. was like number four, uh, and Asheville was like number eight. Now, again, I can understand country. both those cities being in the in the U.S. And they didn't play, did they place on the world list? Did Asheville place? I no, I, I mean, Charleston is the only, only one, one in the that's world. That's right. It's, okay. a, it's really a very impressive stat. Are, sure, there uh, other, are there other cities that are day trips around here that are really cool? that we should have made it. I mean, uh, I like going to Charlotte. I have a great time on the south side of Charlotte, just to be specific. Yeah, uh, but Charlotte's I, one of those cities, if you dropped out of a helicopter blindfold, that you couldn't tell the difference between Charlotte and Dallas. I mean, it's just, you know. All right. How about, um, all right, Chuck Taylor. Hey, speaking of Chuck, what about your Chuck Taylors? What, wasn't Chuck Taylor in the news? Wasn't in the news. I, saw, I was reading a blog about... Uh, uh, all American sneakers you can still rock after the 4th of July and I was uh, shocked that they put a pair of Nikes in there. There's a pair of Nikes from Air Max called the uh, J July 4th sneakers. Okay. That's the name of it. I was like, how is that not offensive? If, if, it's red, white, and blue. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what Betsy Ross was using. For exactly. But the Chuck Taylor uh, $60 Converse were my favorites. They had red stripes on both sides of them with the tongue being painted navy Chuck blue. Taylor's. I had, I had a, uh, one of my boys just went out and bought a pair of Chuck Taylors exactly like the ones I wore in, in high school. Oh, really? And I'm like, the Chuck Taylors have never changed. By the, by the way, do you know why Chuck Taylor has his name on the shoes? Was he a big basketball star in like the 40s or something? More than that, he was a salesperson. Oh. He used to go around to schools, no kidding, look it up. I hope I'm right on this. He's <laughs> Look he, it up. <laughs> in the off season from basketball, he would travel around to high schools and he did uh, clinics and stuff. And while he was there, he would sell these Converse shoes out of the trunk of his car to make money. And then Converse actually brought him in and he made a couple of suggestions for the Chuck Taylors and they incorporated his suggestions into the shoe to make a better shoe. And he introduced the star on the side of it. And so they put that on there called Chuck Taylor's. Jonathan, one of the uh, most bizarre stories that I've read uh, in, well, I won't say ever. I won't even say in the last year because I can't remember. But this is one of the most bizarre stories I've read recently. A girl named Belle Delphine. That's her, I don't know if that's her real name, but Belle Delphine is an Instagram model is how she's described in the story. And Belle Delphine uh, does anime-inspired Instagram posts. So she dresses up as an anime character, I guess. Okay. And from the looks of her, she's somewhat provocative. Okay. All right. Well, she is selling her bath water at $30 a bottle. And she said, thirsty boys, get my bath water, $30 a bottle. The next day she posted... I'm sorry to announce I've sold out. I didn't expect it to be this popular. And clearly she's, what she sold out of is the bottles because she's like, I can take an unlimited amount of baths. Yeah, you can just keep running the bath water. Yeah, but she needs to go get more bottles. But th there's she such a She sits in the tub and the water comes in this, this side and goes out on the back side. I'd have that girl in the tub 24 hours a day if I was mar her marketing guy. I want to know what they're doing with the bath water. They're drinking it. No, she don't said, say that. She said thirsty boys. I know, that's what she said. She's dr they're drinking it. Why would you do that? It's so bizarre. Freaks on the internet. I know. Can we, is there a way we can talk about that? I don't, that, that, if we are going to talk about it, that's like a 530. That's yeah, like, be, that, that's, that's like a hush right. before the rush type of event. Um, but I want to talk about the other water story too. The holy yes. water. The bishop, there's a bishop down in uh, Colombia, not Colombia, Colombia, the country. And he is going to do an exorcism Sunday on an entire city. 
He's flying over it with a helicopter. Yes. I love this idea. And he's going to turn the helicopter into a gigantic beach mister where the water will just disperse across the city as they fly over it. And that, of course, if you've ever had your home blessed and holy water was used, I did that, um, then this would be a good idea for a city. And I'm thinking maybe this is something we could use somewhere here in South Carolina. Well, he says that the city is obviously infested it's possessed. <laughs> with, with demons. So he said it's obvious just from it's looking obvious. at it. So, as you said, are there areas of town in Columbia area? Or are there, like you said, entire just towns and or cities in the state of South Carolina yeah. that are obviously yeah, like possessed Pe by demons and we need to exercise the whole thing place? Yeah, is, is Pelium possessed? Is that the case? <laughs> is Pelium possessed and we need to have the uh, helicopter go up and with the ho holy water and just spray the place down to run the demons out? What do you think we put that on for 7.15 tomorrow? People can call in they about that. They can make that. suggestions for neighborhoods or an entire city or a yeah. portion of a city. Whatever you think. All right. Well, obviously, we're going to have a good news story of the day at 8.10. And, well, uh, and, um, just, for this, uh, just for this little prep session, Yeah. we're not going to do a big thing out of this, but I think it's uh, just as a public service, I'll tell you, the Bilo lost its agreement with the University of South Carolina to be able to use the logo and the colors. No, Bilo ended it. Oh, Bilo, Bilo contacted the University of South Carolina and said, we're removing right. all of your stuff from the Gamecock Bilo, and we are no longer to be referred to as the Gamecock Bilo. And they had been paying, I guess, the University of South Carolina for 30-plus years. That's right. Um, and they've also asked that their name be removed from the Gamecock Berm. Uh, so Bilo okay. has no They're association, out. but it's not just with the University of South Carolina. Clemson, it's over at Clemson, okay. and it's over at every university in America. They're no longer supporting college athletics. This means if you have a Gamecock fan who's nuts in your family about the Gamecocks, and you want a, a Gamecock birthday cake, there is no place in the city to get one. Because Bilo was the only place you could get, a ga even Garnet and Black. Publix wasn't even allowed to use that color Garnet because they don't have an agreement with the university. Just as a note, now we've got a massive void in our community. So what do you do? So I mean, I think they were paying hundreds of thousands of dollars well, to I'm the sure university. They were. Uh, so I can't imagine a bakery, you know, like Tiffany's, <laughs> coming up with a $200,000 pledge to the university so they could sell Gamecock stuff. Well, I'm a Gamecock fan, so I didn't want to mention this before, but I gotta mention it now since they'll be taking the sign down. One of the reasons I think that uh, it was they've taken the sign down, if you ever looked outside of the, the store on Garner's Ferry, it has this gigantic Gamecock, yeah. right? And then it's got Bilo under it. Okay. Well, apparently, it birds would land on the Gamecock because it looks like the Gamecock was crapping on the Bilo sign. Oh my There's God. a gigantic bird crap right there in the middle of it. And I'm like, I think you ought to have that cleaned up. It looks like the Gamecock's crapping all over the Bilo over here. That has now been remedied. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 5.30 on WCOS. See you.